and welcome. My name is John Dickinson for Ryzen Lab, and in this tutorial, we'll be exploring various welding, optimizing, and unwrap panel options. So let's load the file by choosing Files, Load with UVs, and choosing the forward controls.fbx file. And before we start, I just want to point out these two focus options. The first one is Center Selection with a hotkey of F, and the one to the right is Center All with a hotkey of A. And I'm very guilty of using my middle mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And I often find I'm zoomed so far in that I can't find where my object is. In this case, it's much faster to use the A hotkey to center all. And if you want to focus on a specific object, I'm going to go into island mode, say this part here, press F. So I'll do my best to remember to use those hotkeys, and I suggest you do too. All right, so I'm going to hit A to center all, and let's explore these other welding options. We're going to use this arm as the object to explore those options. So if you middle mouse button double click, that will select all of the islands that make up that object. And now we can hit I to isolate. Excellent. So moving the cursor over to UV view, hitting E, and we can work in full screen view. All right, so first of all, I'm going to go into edge mode, F2, double click to select the loop. C to cut, and F4 for island mode. I'm going to select this one. Now I'm going to hold down the tab key, which will toggle the gizmo. I'm just going to move that one up a little bit, just like that. Excellent. So F2, back to edge mode. I'm going to roll in there a little bit. And first of all, I'm going to double click to select this top loop. Now, if we hit W, the bottom island is welded up to the top island. Let's undo. Now we'll select this bottom loop and press W. And you can see the top island is now welded to the bottom island. Let's undo again. Select both and press W. And you can see we get this weird result. And that's because pre-aligned is turned on. So let's undo once more. Just deselect pre-align and press W. And notice how the islands are now welded together using the average distance. Okay, so let's undo again. And we'll turn pre-align back on. And this time, just select this edge and cut. And just click and drag to select these edges. Hold down tab. I'm just going to move these edges to the right slightly. Now, notice how my entire island is moving. And I know exactly why this is happening. I'm going to undo that. And just come over and scroll down. And you'll see that real-time optimize is enabled. So if you're seeing the same as me, just make sure that real-time optimize is disabled. All right, so I'll grab those edges again. Once again, hold down tab and just move those to the right, just to open that up. Okay, I'm just going to increase that selection to make sure I have these two edges selected. And just grab a little bit of this as well. Now we already know what's going to happen if we press W. Everything that was connected to those selected edges was welded. Undo. And this time, we're going to use this option here, Weld Island Cut. And the hotkey for this is Shift W. Ah, see the difference? It welded this cut on this island without welding across islands. And this is really handy when you want to fix unintended cuts and avoid a reset. Let's undo again. And now we're going to select this loop and these ones and also this one. And this time we're going to use this option here. This is the weld islands option, hotkey control W. So I'll press control W. So this welds the two islands together using an average position, but see how it's ignored that internal cut on the top island. Okay, so let's undo again. And this time we're going to use island mode. So we'll select these two islands just by holding down shift and clicking. And what we'll do is press W for the standard weld. And as you'd expect, all of the islands that are connected to these islands are welded. Undo. Next, let's do the weld island cut using Shift W. And that's closed up that cut on this island, the same as if we were in edge mode. Undo. And now let's weld islands with Control W. So again, the same as edge mode. It's taken the average of these two islands and it's left that internal cut unwelded. Now where Weld Islands comes in particularly handy is when you want to weld particular islands 
and avoid a reset. So let's select these two islands and press Ctrl W. U to unfold and P to pack. Excellent. And you can see because it was Ctrl W, it hasn't welded that cut. So let's just select the entire island and press Shift W. And that's been welded and hasn't affected any of the other islands. So it's really important to understand all of these different welding options because if you're just using the standard weld, there will be situations where you're going to weld everything together and have to redo everything you've done. So Shift W and Control W will help you avoid those kind of resets. Okay, so the fourth and last option is magnet weld. And this is a very specific kind of weld. Let's isolate this island by pressing I and we'll press F2 to go into edge mode. Just drag a selection and press C to cut. And if we press F4 to go into island mode and just select any polygon, you can see every single polygon is an individual island. And sometimes you'll import models into Ryzen UV where every polygon has been cut into an individual island. And this is where magnetic weld comes in really handy. So let's middle mouse button select. And because Magnet Weld doesn't have a defined hotkey, we can just click to apply. All right, so now if we just click away and click, you can see that's welded all of those islands together using this threshold value. So if you do import a model that has all of the polygons separated, the first thing to do is use Magnet Weld. Okay, so next let's explore some more of the Unwrap Panel options. And to do that, we're going to load a new file by choosing Load. I'm not going to save the changes to this one. And let's choose mailhead.obj. And we'll just get this set up again. So we'll choose 3Ds for 3D view and flats for UV view. And just maximize this view. And we need to set a seam for this. So F2 for edge mode. And select this edge here, come around the back. Now I'm going to hold down Shift and Control to select the shortest path. You'll use the keyboard shortcut that you have set up. And just select that. C for cut, U to unfold, and let's just maximize this view. Now, if you didn't get a horizontal orientation, just undo and just make sure your initial orientation is set to H. All right, let's just zoom in. And if we zoom into the eye hole, you can see how some of the polygons in the corner of the eye are overlapping. And just here as well. Now we can prevent that by using the fill gaps option. So let's check that and just press U again. Aha. Uh -huh. So what Ryzen UV has done is it's filled the holes with a hidden polygon and that prevents these overlaps. So you could use this option for hard edge openings like these eyes or the mouth or a window, for example. Now also notice these dark blue polygons. And this indicates that these polygons are flipped. And to control those, we can check prevent flips. Let's unwrap again. So now we've removed those flipped polygons and it has changed the mouth opening somewhat, but we're still not getting any overlaps and we're not getting any flips. And the eyes look good as well. And also on the ears. Let's take a look at another example choosing files load. We won't save the changes. And this time we're going to choose forearmhand.obj. Okay, so let's get this set up. Just hitting E. On this side, we'll choose 3Ds. And in UV view, we'll choose flats. And just maximize the 3D view again. Now, flips and fill are still active. So let's just deactivate those. And we'll just set initial orientation to vertical. And now we need to select a loop. And we're still in edge mode. I think this one might be a good start. And we'll just add to that. Once again, I'm using shift, but your keyboard shortcut might be different. That goes all the way around the fingers. And I think probably just one more. Okay, excellent. Pressing E again. So let's cut and unfold and let's take a look. Okay, so we've got some overlaps between the fingers. How are we going for flips? Yeah, there is 
a flipped polygon there. So let's undo and just activate flips and overlaps. Unwrap again. All right, so now those overlaps have gone and we no longer have that flipped polygon. So you can see how useful these settings can be, especially with this kind of model. And we can fine tune the result further by making selections and doing localized unfolds. So let's give that a try. Let's just cut the thumbnail off first, just by selecting a loop, cut, unfold, and that's the only island that's affected because that's the one under the cursor. F4 for island mode, select it and hold down tab and just shift it out of the way. F2 back to edge mode. And let's say we want to do a little bit of further work on this thumb. So we'll just drag a selection around it. And now if we press U, you can see it just unfolds that selection and it hasn't affected the overlaps or flip polygons. And the same goes for optimizing. If we just hit O a few times, you can see how we're optimizing this selection and not affecting the rest of the island. So selections are a really great way to fine tune your unwrap. Keep in mind that there's also the unfold brush for doing localized unfolds and also the optimize brush for localized optimizations. So let's hit backspace to deselect. Select the unfold brush and just zoom in. And you can see by clicking over the thumb, it's the only area that gets affected. If you choose the optimization brush, it's the same thing. I really like these tools. Okay, so let's grab the select tool again. The hotkey is Q. And let's take a look at how constraints work with this model. We'll double click this loop here and we'll add a horizontal constraint and double click this one here and add a vertical constraint. And we have flips and overlaps still selected. So if we unfold now, it's done what we expect by preventing flips and overlaps. And you can see this selection is now straight and this is straight, but it's also repositioned the island. So let's just pack again. And you can see we go back to the original orientation. All right, let's undo that. If for some reason we didn't want the orientation of the island to change, we could do a localized unfold. First of all, we'll just turn off flips and overlaps, make our selection, and unfold. And that successfully constrains that and doesn't re flip or overlap the polygons. Okay, with this model still open, I'll just point out this option here. This is constrain edge or edges aligned, and you'd use this if you want to straighten edges, but it doesn't necessarily have to be vertically or horizontally. So let's select some edges, check constrain edge aligned, and because we don't want to affect the rest of the island, we'll just select that area, and we can either hit U to unwrap, or we can hit O to optimize. And now we have that straight. Okay, so the last option for constraints is this one here, and this is the pin option. And we're going to use the mailhead.obj file. So choosing load, don't save, mailhead.obj, and pressing E to see both views. And let's quickly unwrap this again. Exactly the same way as we did previously. making sure that flips, overlaps, and fill is selected. And also that initial orientation is set to horizontal. Cut, unwrap. Okay, pressing E just to maximize the UV edit view. All right, so now let's double click this loop here and add this one. Come up and click on pin. And notice how the vertices on those loops turn black. And this signifies that these vertices are now locked in position. Let's press U to unfold again. And notice how these edges didn't move. So you can use the pin constraint to freeze the parts of your mess that you're happy with. And that allows you to unfold and 
also to move and to optimize without affecting those areas. Okay, so let's select all, control A, and we'll remove the pins by clicking on unpin. Now, if we just select the drag tool again, and just zoom in a little bit and drag an area, you can see how it's really easy to distort the mesh. And you may remember that we actually saw this a little now earlier. Now we can avoid in the that by using where real time optimize. By Let's re enable it. And now we'll try and drag the same area. So it becomes much more difficult to distort the mesh with real time optimize enabled. Okay, so that covers the various basic welding, optimizing, and unwrap panel features. So please join me in the next tutorial where we'll take a good look at the basics of packing. For now, this is John Dickinson for Rhizome Lab. I'll see you in the next tutorial.